And I'm going to begin by asking you some questions about the century of humiliation uh, that China suffered, because I believe it had some impact on Chinese attitudes uh, to the world. So let me begin by noting that at the end of the 18th century, China had enjoyed decades of peace and stability under the Qianlong Emperor, 1735 to 1796. He stepped down in 1796. In less than 50 years, China was humiliated. So the question in my mind is, have the Chinese historians analyzed what happened? What reasons do they give for the dramatic weakening of China relative to the West? And why did China fall behind? So what's, what's your views on that? The story of the decline of the Qing dynasty is as, as complex, as uh, multifaceted as what Gibbons wrote about the decline and fall of Rome. Uh, it's a long story, and interestingly, that history, that official history, is just now being compiled in China. Just now? <laughs> China has a, a tradition of writing official histories. Yes. There have been 24, the last being the history of the Ming Dynasty. Mm -hmm. The history of the Qing from 1648 to 1911 uh -huh. is just now being written. Uh -huh. The project, I think, was launched year 2003 or something. I remember uh, former Vice Premier Li Lanqing uh, telling us about it. It has got more material than all the previous dynasties combined. Mm -hmm. And initially, they talked about 99 volumes. Uh -huh. Last I heard, it would be at least 250 volumes. Uh -huh. And the more they go into it, the bigger the story. Uh -huh. and the, it, the history of humiliation in, in the 19th century, yes. of course, has its uh, origins before that. Mm -hmm. Qianlong, de facto, Qianlong uh, reigned longer than his grandfather, Kangxi. Yeah. Uh, but out of deference to, to the Kangxi emperor, uh -huh. he stepped down uh -huh. and handed power over to the Jiaqing emperor. But he continued to wield power mm -hmm. behind the scene for many more years. Mm -hmm. uh, but by that time, the Qing dynasty was very corrupt. Mm -hmm. And when you're corrupt, the rot is within. Uh -huh. And then when foreign challenges come, you can cope. Mm -hmm. And really, while we talk about foreign impingement on China, uh -huh. uh, not just Western, but also the Russian from the North, yes. and then later Japan, yes. uh, through Korea, um, China went through a, a period of terrible internal discord. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Taiping Rebellion, uh, the Muslim Rebellion in the West, mm -hmm. uh, those took a horrend horrendous number of Chinese lives. Mm -hmm. Tens of millions died mm -hmm. in those terrible civil wars. Mm -hmm. And it was because China was internally weak mm -hmm. that it, it succumbed to external challenges. And this is increasingly how they see themselves now. Mm -hmm. I'm told that if you go to the, to, uh, the Russian Chinese border, mm -hmm. uh, the museum to the Treaty of Aigun, mm -hmm. which saw all that land north of the Amu, Mm. and east of the Ussuri mm. being handed over to Tsarist Russia. Mm. You end up by saying, when you are weak, things happen. Mm -hmm. And indeed, if you look at the opioid crisis in China, mm. yes, the British sold the opium, mm. and it was despicable. Mm. Uh, but why were they so receptive to opium? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like today in America, I mean, you can blame the Mexicans and the mm. Colombians for... Mm -hmm. for, for drugs, but why is there such a huge market? Mm -hmm. So the reflection about the 19th century, the humiliation, mm -hmm. will be completely incomplete mm -hmm. uh, without a deep understanding of the internal rot mm -hmm. in China, mm -hmm. which began during the Qianlong period. Yes.